My phone is freaking out. And the chocolate things you like. Oh, cool. I don't know what the chocolate things I like are. But neat. Yes, that was indeed my phone. So, can you hear me? Is everything not lagging? Are we are we comfy? Are we cool? Are we having a good time? God, I hope so. Woohoo! Welcome. You've got dads. Good. I have dads. I think I read that already. Yeah, I played the mini game. Um, we're gonna go with Damien again, cause I like Damien. That's cute. Whoa, dads. Yes, dads. Oh, I see. They use, like, the VTuber blanket default on their VTuber. That's clever. That's one way to make a uh, emote. Um, etto... Yeah, let's do Damien. Because look, I've got one heart already. I'm doing good, guys. Uh, is this all the same? Yeah, it is. I had lots of fun hanging out with Damien the other day. I wonder what he's up to. I open up Dad book and start writing him a message when Amanda walks in the door. Dad, you got a letter. Oh, is it from Grandma? Hmm. No, it's from Damien. Whoa. Can I see it? Amanda hands me the piece of old parchment, folded into an envelope, and sealed with wax. Damn, that dude goes all out. I pry off the seal and unfold the letter. In the most beautiful calligraphy, uh, the letter reads... My dearest Finn, I hope you find my continued correspondence endearingly, rather than trying. One can only hope that my use of the slower, more traditional form of communication will showcase my sincere and earnest sentiment that I greatly enjoy our time together. I write this hastily under the warm embrace of my excitement, fearful that I may misstep and speak towards something unwelcome. For now, I hope that you might forgive my boldness. I will simply say that your company has, been, has greatly occupied my thoughts. While the afternoon may have been derailed by, for, uh, by forces unforeseen, your, companion, your companionship helped a great deal. Not only in the discipline of my child, but in the morale of my spirit. And I thank you for that. I welcome... I, I, felt, I thank you. That said. And for that I thank you. Oh my god, my brain, I'm so tired. That said, Finn, if you'll allow me, I would... It would mean the world for me if I could enjoy your time. Perhaps a trip to the cinema, followed by a moonlit stroll, would be to your taste. I eagerly await your response with great respect. D. Bloodmark. So fancy. Very fancy. Look at that smug face. Yeah, she's smug as fuck. <laughs> Amanda and I both look up from the letter. Hmm. Wow. He's good. Hmm. So you're gonna catch a movie on? Uh, yeah. I better message him on Dadbook and let him know. Amanda slaps my laptop shut. You have to write him back. A real letter. But my handwriting looks like two toddlers fighting over a crayon. Yeah. Dad, you have to. He wrote you a letter. That's so cool! Will you help me? I need to, uh, I need to class this up. 
Fava, I was made for this. Here's what you do. Find tickets to a show that you two like, then enclose them in the letter. Oh, that is classy. Amanda and I hop onto my laptop and peruse that show times. He doesn't seem to like roman he doesn't seem like the romantic comedy kind of guy. Oh, here's one. Vampire Crusade 2. Evil never dies. I don't know, that sounds kind of stupid. Actually, it's critically acclaimed exploration of the uh, Inu of existence. It really turns the vampire trope on its head. R really? Huh. Nah. That's just lots of blood and vampire titties. Well, let's roll the dice. Eh? I purchase the tickets and print them out. Then, oh, I <laughs> purchase the tickets and then print them out. And then sit down on the table with Amanda to try drafting a nice letter. No! You fuck! You found it! You found it! Damn it! I hate that redeem. I only really do that because y'all are all concerned about my health and shit. If you're gonna spend that many points, spend it on the on the community goal. There's a community goal. <laughs> Fair I return. Thank you. Uh, I I've got a I've got a pepperoni pizza. A good old pep. Down at the table with Amanda and tried drafting a nice letter. I start writing. Damien. Good one. What's next? <laughs> Jeez, Dad, have some faith in yourself. Mm. Okay, we're trucking along. Let him know how you're feeling. Oh, thanks for the hydrate. Hey, Gina. You know what's great about cloudy apple? It tastes like cider, but it's actually hydrating you. It's good. Why is my little dude not, like, lighting up? Oh, dear. He is delayed. Discord? Are you having trouble? Hmm. Okay. Alright then. Little dude in the dark for too long. Yeah. Yeah. Something happened recently and my, my capture hasn't been as good as it used to be. I don't know what I've done. It's weird, because I have the most amazing PC with the most amazing parts. So, um... <laughs> I'm just not using it right, I guess. Uh... Right. So... You really need to eat, because my chair and clothes is ready beside me. Crystal, it's in the oven. Um... Uh, you find me in good spirits, for I felt very much the same after our last encounter. Nice. Yeah. Ask him to hang out already. True art takes time, Amanda. It does. 
that's right. Um, a strange sound of it. That's too fancy for me. Well, a strange turn of events. I found myself enamored of the situation at hand. Oh. Bring it home, pops. Let me take you out. I got two tickets to the movies. <laughs> I very much enjoy your company. Accompanying me to the cinema. <sighs> it's move. Calling it the cinema is a classy move. <laughs> Enclosed, you'll find two tickets to Vampire Crusade Second. Evil Never Dies, which I'm sure you'll both find titillating and enjoyable. <sighs> Namaste. We'll carry on. Best wishes. And then I sign my name. My full name. Fancy it that way. Finn McFinn. If you ask about the name, it was all my chat. <laughs> they were just like, Finn! Okay, what's my last name? McFinn! Okay! Huh. <laughs> I love them so. I love all of you. Uh, is this okay? Amanda reads over... What? Wait. What? Has it, has it has it been 13 minutes already, or did I not start the timer? No, I definitely started the timer. Has it been 13 minutes already? What the fuck? That was fast. Um, I, uh, I'll, 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 I'll be right back. I think. Pizza's not done, so I'm assuming the. Uh, timer fried? Like, it glitched out or something? I don't know, I've reset it. Um, Amanda reads over my sloppy handwriting. I thought it was too quick. It's not that fast. Also, hi Mia! Yes, I'm going with Damien. I like Damien, he hot. D oh god, the handwriting! Ah, that's... Mm, that's worse than mine. Mm. Okay. <sighs> Looks good. Hmm. You spelled his name wrong. What? Hmm. Nah, just trying to keep you on your toes. No, you have to do is steal it. Uh, seal it and put it in his mailbox. Uh, can I see a little tape? Yes. That's not authentic enough. I have an idea. I'll be right back. Amanda leaves the room and returns with a candle, a lighter, and a small piece of wood. Huh. Gotta have a wax seal. She lights the candle, which starts to burn down to form a pool of melted wax. What's the other huh? thing? Amanda pours some wax onto the folded letter, expertly presses the small piece of wood onto it, she lets it dry for a second and pulls the wood away, revealing... Here it is! Your sigil! A little kitten with a bow on its head! <laughs> awesome! <laughs> Scrapbooking stuff always comes in clutch. Well, I guess all there is to do is to deliver it to his doorstep now, huh? Hmm. Oh, I thought we were getting a carrier pigeon to do it. Mm -hmm. I already called my guy. Mm. I have a pigeon guy. Marcus has the good pigeons. <laughs> don't get your pigeons from Anthony. They're no good. I don't want to know if any of this is true. I head outside and walk over to Damien's house. I slip a letter into the slot uh, in his door and go back home. Hmm. Mission accomplished. Now we play the waiting game. I fucking love this game so much. So, so much. 
Night finally rolls around where I'm supposed to meet with Damien. The next day, he had left another beautifully crafted letter thanking, thanking me for mine and agreeing to the evening. Amanda helps me pick out a nice outfit, and I show up to the theatre a little bit early. It's a chilly night, and the theatre is kind of crowded, but it's still nice. How do you do? I jump at the sound of his voice and turn around to see Damien right behind me. <laughs> you almost gave me a heart attack. How long were you there for? Ah. What was the that for? I don't know. I just walked up. My apologies for frightening you. Was that thunder? Is it going to rain soon? Oh. I didn't hear anything. What? 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 Regardless, the hour grows close. Shall we take our seats in the cinema? I must thank you again for purchasing our tickets. Please, allow me to repay the deed of Sour Patch Kids, or perhaps Milk Duds? Let's do it! We get, in, we get in line to buy snacks. As we're waiting, I hear a familiar voice behind us. Ugh, my dad's here. I turn around to find Lucian standing a few feet behind us with a gaggle of other goth kids. Lucian, how nice to see you. I didn't know you were coming to the theater. I'm glad to see you spending some quality time with your friends. Whatever, Dad. And what movie will you be attending tonight? My friends are making me see some kids' movie about talking animals. I don't really care for it. Well, I do hope you enjoy your evening. We'll be watching Vampire Crusade 2, Evil Never Dies. I you watching that? Yeah, I thought Damien would enjoy it. Huh. Ha, good luck with that, Dad. Lucian rejoins uh, his friends, and I look over to Damien. G good luck with that? It's nothing. My son loves to tease. We wait in line for a little longer, and Damien buys us snacks. He sit. What? <laughs> Me, yeah, I see that blush. Some boy gonna get his pizza. I'm gonna get my pizza! <sighs> uh, he seems a little nervous. I wonder what's wrong. Huh. I wonder what's wrong too. Damien and I take our seats at Salon for previews. Glancing at him, I can see that he's sweating profusely and gripping his armrest. Is everything okay? Everything is perfectly fine. I'm so uh, excited for this film. I'm a devoted patron of the arts, especially the scary arts. The scarier the art, the better. You have a favorite horror movie? I, of course I have a favorite horror movie. Mine is Halloween Town, terrifying. Oh, interesting. That's odd, I don't seem to remember Halloween Town being that scary. I would have expected him to bring up some sort of strange foreign horror film that I'd never heard of. Is he scared of horror? Is he scared of horror? Oh, I'm gonna call him. Damien's knuckles are turning white. It looks like he's about to rip the armrest off. Wait a second. Damien, are you afraid of horror movies? What? You must be joking. I love horror movies. The light's dim for the film. Ah! Damien screams. <laughs> oh, he's baby! Also, my... Okay, now it's going off. Okay, I'll be back. Alright. I have pizza. Fear me. Oh. Oh god, that's good. Okay, that was worth it. This was worth it. Return of the King. <laughs> Thank you, Rob. Mm. I feel the carbs. I don't. I have, um... I have a really high metabolism. So, I need the carbs. God, I need the carbs. Ah. 
how I'm going for the hydrate. I'm running out of cloudy apple. I hope food supplies get here soon. And then eat my king. Why have I become a king? When did I become royalty? I'm loving it, but... <laughs> uh... Rob, if I'm the king, then are you my knight? Okay, anyway. Um... Damien. Apologize. I was thinking about something far scarier than this movie, which is not scary at all. Sir, you have been a king since the very start of your existence. Oh my goodness, Crystal. You guys are such shrimps. I love it. Also, I burnt my tongue. <laughs> how does how does a sunny boy burn his tongue? <laughs> We settle in as the film starts. I offer Damien some licorice and he takes one. I take note of how much his hands are shaking. <sighs> the title flashes across the screen in bloody letters. Vampire Crusade 2, Evil Never Dies. A pale man with long silver hair, glittering red eyes and well-oiled abs sits up in a coffin. Are you telling me I have to voice the fucking... Okay, fine. Fine. Fine, I can think of a, think of a voice for a big sparkly vampire here. Also, I'm sorry for the pizza breaks. You're cute. Thank you, Crystal. Plus, we redeemed you to eat anyway. That's fair. Awaken my coven. Two more vampires slide the tops of their stone coffins onto the floor. Brother, is it time? Yes, husband. But also, mortal enemy, it is time. This is going to be fun. <laughs> the three look at each other and then to the camera. For the Vampire Crusade. This rules. <laughs> the trail of vampires flies off into the night as foreboding organ music plays in the distance. I somehow get lost in the movie. As dumb as it sounded, it's actually a pretty fun flick. <sighs> we get a tense moment of, uh, of the movie where Romulus Trueblood sits at a truce meeting with the general of the human army, his wife, Romulus, has fallen in love with. Romulus, it is good to finally meet you. General, I agree, it's good to finally blood you. Oh my. <laughs> blood to you. Romulus leaps out and slashes the general's throat. Blood splatters over everything, including the camera. Ah! 
Damien screams again, reflexively grasping my hand. I immediately blush, forgetting about any vampires or blood or vampiric blood. <sighs> oh, I'm terribly sorry. Damien reacts to his hand and places it back in his lap. I was writing a novel in my head about blood magic, and I got an extremely scary section. Uh-huh. Damien goes back to quietly stressing out over the movie. It's kind of cute that he won't admit that he's afraid of it. I wish he would hold onto my hand again. Maybe I could do something to try and make him feel more comfortable. I've got it. I'll do what all dads do best. Talk during the movie. Why does a dog go when it loses its tail? What? Where? To the retail store. I yell that last bit a little bit, a little too loud for the crowded theater, but I can see a smile from Damien's face. Oh. <laughs> Good one, Finn. Oh. The rest of the movie goes by relatively smoothly. Smoothly? <laughs> smoothly! Who made a Dramacula? Dramacula. Write the script again. <laughs> Rob, I love you. Damien is so cute! He is! How? How? I'm starving! How? I only ever get hungry when I start eating, which is why I can go without food, but as soon as you got me eating, I have to eat. Actually, not gonna lie, kinda wanna draw Dramacula as a character. Do it. <laughs> the rest of the movie goes by relatively smoothly, with only a few whimpers from Damien. Maybe he would've liked the romantic comedy better. We get to see the final scene of the movie, where Romulus, Bad Blood, and the General's wife embrace each other in the script. It appears that the true Vampire Crusade was the Vampire Crusade in our hearts, our cold, unbeating hearts. Romulus and the General's wife begin making out hard. What? The film fades to black, and the end appears on screen, but then it hard cuts to Demetrius and his uh, rival lover, Carmella, who watched the two from afar. Huh. Oh no, twist ending. Our bloodline has been pure for a thousand years, Romulus has betrayed us by loving a human woman. It will only be a short time before the next vampire crew saved free. Evil must die again. <laughs> more thunder, more ominous organs. The movie fades out again, and a bloody question mark now accompanies the end. Damien and I walk out of the movie theater amidst throngs of shattering moviegoers. He's a little more pale than I remember, but otherwise he survived the encounter. He even seems kind of invigorated. Huh. What an interesting film. While the premise admittedly struck me as pedestrian, I was intrigued by its harrowing love story and great attention to detail in regards to vampiric lore. Yeah, it was pretty good. A lot more vampire titties than I thought there would be. Come, the night is young. Let's take a stroll. Excuse me while I just grab another slice. Oh. How? How? Oh god. <clears throat> Halfway down.
Come, the night is young. Let's take a stroll. Hell yeah. Damien is making a point of not telling me where he's taking me. Still, I'm enjoying the walk and the cool night air. Being alone here with Damien is a lot better than being in a crowded theatre. Lovely night, isn't it? Oh. As lovely as the company, yes. Blush. He thinks I'm lovely! Damn, okay. Here comes the smooth response. <laughs> You're killing it! You're killing it, Finn! Thanks. No problem. Crushed it. We both stand there, feeling a little awkward. I sure am one smooth operator. Are you getting a little hungry? We could maybe stop off and grab something to eat. Worry not, friend. I have a plan. We turn the corner and are greeted by the gates of a cemetery? What? Are we going in there? A little bit of Victorian flavour, Finn. Trust me. Hmm. I'm a bit nervous, but Damien hasn't led me wrong yet. I follow his lead as we walk into the cemetery. Statues of angels stare down at us as we follow a path through the faded tombstones. As we crest a small hill, we get to a beautiful view of the city. The night's, uh, the night lights sparkle around us. I gotta hand it to him for being in a cemetery. This is strangely romantic. Should have said, "Well, aren't you a smoothie?" God dang it, Dad vs. Finn. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna just nom real quick. Listen to the music while I nom. Oh. Oh, Picnicking in graveyards is an old Victorian tradition. An appropriate finish to an evening after a vampire movie, wouldn't you say? With a flourish, Damien produces a blanket and a picnic basket. Wait, where were you hiding that? Oh. Under my cloak? Oh, right. <sighs> Damien unfolds the blanket, and we both sit down, gazing out at the city lights. He produces a bottle of red wine and a fine selection of cheeses. In the Victorian era, there were no public art gal galleries, parks, or botanical gardens to speak of. Once rural ga graveyards became a more popular alternative to church, uh, to church burials, they became the only place that people could see beautiful plant life and fine sculptures. That makes sense. This is pretty nice. I have a question, though. How are you so okay with being in a graveyard, but you had trouble handling a scary movie? <sighs> I... I wasn't... He sighs deeply. Okay, yes, I was extremely scared by that movie. <sighs> I was not writing a book about blood magic in my head. I just have never been good at those. I just feel as if, because of how I look and act, people expect me to love horror films, so I must play the part. Truth be told, I don't know if I have the constitution for them at times. <sighs> Damien, I'm so sorry. If I'd have known, I would have suggested another movie. <clears throat> It's quite alright. I actually did find myself enjoying this one, thanks to your help. <sighs> Graveyards, however, I think there's something rather beautiful about death. Cemeteries are traditionally built away from cities, away from the realm of the living, and it keeps us rather separated from it. <laughs> to acknowledge death and become comfortable with it, I think it gives us a certain intimate knowledge of ourselves. <laughs> Does it amongst generations of those who came before us, to be truly alive in the midst of so much death brings me great comfort. Death helps me appreciate life, to savor every second. 
We sit and enjoy our food and wine. I don't feel scared anymore. Never thought I'd be comfortable sitting alone in a graveyard at night. I actually feel very peaceful. He's so adorable. Ow. Oh. I'm hungry. <laughs> Oh god, that sounds amazing. Wait, no, not me! Damien! Damien! Grumble. <clears throat> Suddenly, it doesn't seem like we're alone. Off in the distance, I see a shadowy figure in the trees. What is that? <sighs> I'm... Not sure. It noticed us. I'm paralyzed with fear as it begins lumbering slowly toward us. Its shape taking a more animal form, more feral. I look to Damien for help, but he's just as afraid and, and transfixed as I am. I want to scream, but it's stuck in my throat. The creature's getting closer, moving faster. <gasps> oh. It's a dog. As it finally comes into the light, the friendliest, dumbest little Boston Terrier I've ever seen pulls its owner towards us. The dog, the dog trots over to Damien and sniffs, Help! and sniffs at his hands. I'm not gonna imagine myself. <laughs> I already know what he looked like with cat ears thanks to Mia. Damien looks ecstatic. He ruffles the dog's fur happily. Huh. What a beautiful dog. Hey. We both look up, not expecting to see... Thanks. Ah! I did to see I'm a hot one! <laughs> also, with how happy his terrier is... That just shows how good of a man he is! Ah! Hmm. Robert, what are you doing out here on this lovely evening? Hmm? Uh, hunting cryptids. What? Uh, what? Uh, I, I didn't know you had a dog. I... This isn't my dog. I found her wandering the street. They put a leash on her, and now we're walking around this graveyard together. Mm -hmm. Hunting cryptids. Mm. Damien and I share a look. Mm. May I give her a treat? Mm. Sure. Wouldn't give her cheese, though. Mm. Not to worry. Damien reaches into the depths of his cloak and, proceed and procures a small dog treat. What else is he keeping in there? <laughs> I'm not blushing, you're blushing. Ow. Ow.
Mm. I don't have a counter for that. We're both blushing. The dog laps up the tree and crunches away, tail wagging furiously. Damien continues to smooth down her fur. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Ah. My absolute pleasure. Damien shakes the dog's paw. Ah. Lovely to meet you, my friend. May our paths cross again. Robert and his? Dog disappears into the darkness again. Oh, Robert and his dog? Disappears into the darkness again. Damien stares after them. I didn't know you like dogs. Victorians loved dogs, actually. Most Victorian women of high fashion would always be accompanied by a small dog, such as a terrier or a Maltese. I, uh, think big dogs are nice too. <laughs> yeah, man, dogs are cool. I do believe we've had enough excitement for one night. Let's say we make our way home. Damon hops to his feet and extends a hand to help me up. I gladly take it as uh, my knees aren't what they used to be. He packs up his picnic basket and leads us out of the graveyard. As we begin the walk home, I take one last look at the cemetery. It really is beautiful. Like a proper gentleman, Damien walks me to my doorstep. Thank you ever so kindly for your company tonight. Damien, it was my pleasure. Finn, if you'll allow me, it would bring me great joy to offer you a token of my affection. Damien reaches into his cloak and pulls out a folded, folded monogrammed handkerchief. He presses it into my hand. W wow. <laughs> Thank you, Damien. Damien shuffles his feet. I just want to say that it's rare to find someone like you. Someone who's open to my eccentricities. It's nice to feel so accepted. Um, thank you. Damien gives me a hand. Uh, gives me a hand. Gives my hand a quick squeeze. Aww. Damien blushes and hastily reacts, uh, retracts from his hand. Uh, I must take my leave. Good night. Before I can say anything else, he's gone. Huh. I lock the door and step inside. Like a whirlwind, wind, Amanda runs from the window and plops down on the couch, trying to look nonchalant. We'll talk about it after my last slice of pizza. This makes me want to play a cards against humanity here we are. Is that why you wanted game night? Because I saw that request. Mm. Okay, I am very full. I'm very happy. Hey, Dad. What's up? Were you watching me from the window? Huh. No, I was just, uh... Hmm. Okay, yes. How was the movie? <sighs> Lots of vampire titties. 
Told you. But, as it turns out, Damien is sca- eh? Wait. Amanda doesn't need to know that. I'll keep it between me and Damien. Sca scary cool. Yep, he's so cool, it's scary. I say, Finn. Did you know that graveyards used to be a place to throw parties? Eh? I think I'm misremembering that. Mm. Wow, that's pretty punk. Also, we saw a dog. Definitely thought it, uh, it was a werewolf for a minute there. How can you be so sure it wasn't a werewolf? How can you be so sure I'm not a werewolf? And how can I be so sure you're not a werewolf? Hmm. Amanda's eyes narrow. Huh. I don't trust you. Nor are you. <laughs> we make intense, wary eye contact for a second. Hmm. Anyway, I'm calling it for the night. Don't stay up too late, will you? Huh. Uh, I'll try not to howl at the moon past midnight. I would host a car game for y'all. Aww. We did pretty well on that. Hell yeah! Friend, you've simply taken the egg on this one. Um, t taken the egg is a, uh, it's a, <clears throat> it's a, it's a Victorian phrase. It technically means winning, so, uh, you've, ultimately, you've, you've won. Beautiful. I wish the mic quality was better for these guys. Oh well. Well, it's been a long day. I'm just about ready to pack it in. After a few bites of ice cream from the freezer, I turn off all the lights and walk down to the hall, uh, down the hall to my room. I wonder if Amanda's still awake. <clears throat> that kid needs some sleep. As I pass her room, I can hear a faint sound, but can't quite make out what it is. I get a little closer. Is she... crying? I knock gently on the door. Hey, Amanda. The crying immediately stops. N not right now. Her voice sounds strained. She sniffles. I need to make sure she's okay. I open the door. <laughs> in the dark, I see Amanda's outline in the middle of the bed. No, I didn't want to see this. <sighs> Knees hugged against her body. Is everything okay? I don't want to talk about it. Did something happen? No, nothing happened. Go away. Amanda, get out! Okay, okay. I quickly leave her room, then shut the door behind me. Once the door closes, I can hear her crying again. Wow. What has her so upset? She seemed fine earlier. She surely is so open with me. Did I do something wrong? Is she mad at me? I guess if she wasn't before, she definitely is now. I can't remember the last time she snapped at me like that. I have a hard time falling asleep, but when I finally do, it's... I'm still thinking about Amanda. After a long night of very little sleep, I roll out of the bed and make myself a pot of coffee. Amanda should be up for school soon. Maybe she'll be willing to talk about whatever's bothering her. About ten minutes before she's supposed to leave, Amanda comes out of her room and makes a beeline for the freezer. Morning, Amanda. Morning. She drops a frozen waffle in the toaster and slams the freezer door. She won't look at me. Yikes. So, anything big going on in school today? Oh. No. Okay. Do you know right school? No. Want some coffee? <laughs> I feel bad. I don't like feeling bad. <laughs> Alright, I'll leave you be. I back out of the room and close the door gently behind me. She immediately starts crying again. 
No idea what's self chat, totally normal. I feel awful just leaving out to cry, but I also get the feeling that if I tried to do anything else, it would only have made her more upset. I can't stop mentally cycling through all sorts of awful things she could have been dealing with right now. Well, anything, I just want her to be happy and safe. I have a hard time falling asleep, but when I finally do, I'm still thinking about Amanda. After a long night of very little sleep, I don't want to bed, but better than maybe she'll talk about is before she's supposed to leave, Amanda comes out of her room and makes a beeline for the freezer. Morning, Amanda. Morning. She drops a frozen waffle into the toaster and slams the freezer door. She won't look at me. Yikes. So, anything big going on at school today? <sighs> no. Okay, do you need to write school? No. Oh, okay, she's just mad at me no matter what. Cool. I have to go. Amanda picks up her bag and storms out. Oh. Okay. I haven't seen her act like this in a long time. It's usually short-lived, but it always hurts. Hopefully this blows over and things are back to normal soon. I sit back at the kitchen table and look at a picture of Amanda. And I hang it on a wall. In it, I'm teaching her to ride a bike. Her face is a mixture of excitement and pure, unadulterated fear. I remember how determined she was. Every time she would fall off and scrape her knees, she would get up and try it again. Finally, I had to stop her because she was bleeding everywhere. And then she started to cry because she didn't think she needed bandages and wanted to keep crying. As I put the bike away, she just stood in the middle of the street and screamed. Then I took her for ice cream and it was like nothing ever happened. After giving it a bit of thought, I decided that if I force her to talk about it, I'm only going to make things worse. But I have an idea. I start rummaging around the there for ingredients. I hear Amanda walk in the door. Instead of heading for the kitchen like she usually does, she makes a beeline to her room. She's clearly trying to avoid me. Hey, Pumpkin. What? You come in for a sec? There's a moment of silence. Yeah? I wanted to say sorry about last night. I'm just worried about you, kiddo. I'm just worried about you, kiddo. I get scared uh, when I know something's wrong, and I get even more scared when I feel like I can't do anything about it. Dad, I... So just... Whatever it is... Uh, and you don't have to tell me if you don't want to, but whatever it is, know that you have a dad in your corner who wants you to be happy. Oh. Honey, you know I'm bad at words, so I was hoping I could speak a language we both understand. I pull a cake out of the refrigerator. Holy shit, I made an entire cake! And place it on the table. Hopefully the frosting has set by now. Ta-da! Dad. It took me a really long time because I ran out of red frosting. Somewhere around sad and had to start over and sorry you're sad but I support you 100% oh it's cute ah. this is beautiful oh! <laughs> <laughs> this game is cute <laughs> it's strawberry Amanda gives me a big old hug I grab some plates and forks and serve up, us up some delicious cake. So, it's really stupid. What is? This whole thing, I know I've been really weird lately. That's just, I don't even know how to explain it. I feel like I might have to make you a chart. I'm listening. Do you want me to take notes? Uh -huh. I guess I should start from the top. So, you know how Emma R is going to that fancy school in California, right? Emma R. <laughs> Dad, that was me! <laughs> what? I thought you were MP. <laughs> Dad, are you doing okay? I am getting legit worried. <laughs> I've been doing a lot of gluing and varnishing in unventilated spaces. Carry on. Anyways, ever since she got the acceptance letter, I've been feeling like she's drifting away, you know? And she's been spending a lot of time with Grace and MOP. I just thought it was all in my head for a while, but when I found out from Roseanne that both of the Emmas, Grace and Noah, all went to a party at Mackenzie F's on the same night. They all told me they were busy studying for Calc AB final. Yikes. <sighs> so, another important piece of information is, uh, God, this is embarrassing. I, um, 
have a crush on Noah, and uh, that's a thing. What? Whoa. I had no idea. I definitely didn't know that. Okay. You're a bad liar. So are you. I learned from the worst. Oh. Anyway, so the only person I told about the crush was Emma R, and she promised not to tell anybody. I didn't confront them about it, about the party thing, because I didn't want to start drama. So I just keep quiet and keep going about my business. And Amanda sighs. And then one day I invite everybody out to, uh, to get nachos at the mall, and after not texting me back for like two hours, even though none of them ever put their phones down for more than 60 seconds, they will say they're busy, like, simultaneously. So I tell them, never mind, I'll just eat nachos at home, right? But we were out of chips, and I really, really wanted nachos. Totally understandable. Ugh. So I go to the mall anyway. I get to the food court, and who do I see there but Grace, Emma P, Emma R, and Noah all hanging out together and eating nachos without me. What? <laughs> it gets better. I'm standing by the escalators watching them, and I realize that Noah has his arm around Emma R, which is kind of weird, right? But then they kiss! No. Yes, I know. So I storm over there and I'm like, hey. And Grace drops a nacho on her shirt because of course she does. And MRR just like glares at me. Grace. Grace. Nothing's coming up. I don't know who that is. Grace is the... Gossipy one? I know. Hey. Nailed it. Grace is the one nobody really likes, or I guess that's me now. But anyway, nobody will say anything, and I'm just like, you guys suck, which I realize is not the most eloquent thing to say, but I was very angry and really embarrassed, and I just wanted to get out of there. So I left, without nitros, might I add, which only further contributed to the shitty day, and I immediately drafted a super long text to the group chat, asking them why they've been so weird, and I wrote another one to Emma R, asking how long the Noah thing's been going on, and... Sorry, I know that's a lot. You're still following? Oh, okay. Get a load of this. Emma R says, You know what? Let me just read it to you. Amanda pulls out her phone and reads, word for word, an orderously long string of text messages. Hmm. Can you believe that? I cannot believe that. I care so much about Amanda's social life and mental well-being, but man, I do not understand what she's talking about. This is beyond me, but I am trying my hardest to be supportive. Oh. They were dating in secret for like months. So I told her that she's being a really terrible friend and she's like, well, if you think I'm so terrible, then just stop being my friend. And I was like, okay, and then she left me on read. And then, wait, left me on read? What's that? Oh, like she saw my messages and didn't reply and I, no, because there are red uh, read receipts. I don't know what read receipts are, but I'm just going to nod and pretend I understand. Gotcha. So, while this is all happening, I'm talking to Emma P about how mad I am, because she's at least being kind of reasonable, and I'm venting to her about how pissed I am at everybody and stuff. And then out of nowhere, Noah texts me and is like, how could you say that about me? And I'm like, say what about you? And he tells me that Emma P sent screenshots of everything I told uh, to the group chat uh, that I got kicked out of. Alright, I think you lost me at screenshots, but that definitely sounds bad. Aww. There's so much more, but honestly, it's all really just stupid teenager stuff. The bottom line is that everybody dropped me, half of my grade hates me, and now I have no friends. Amanda, I'm so sorry. I almost expected it from everybody else, but... Emma R's been there since Dad died. I can't believe she just stabbed me in the back like that. I'm not even that mad that she's dating Noah. I'm just upset that she lied to me about it for so long. Amanda stabs at the remnants of her cake. Okay, I take it back. I'm kind of mad that she's dating Noah. Like, what did I do wrong? Why did everybody just suddenly decide I'm not cool anymore? Why wasn't I enough? I don't understand. And as mad as I am at everybody, like, I miss them, Dad. Amanda looks so dejected, I almost can't take it. What could I possibly say to help? Ah. Anyways, that's it. 
that's the whole sordid tale. Thanks for listening. Tune in next week for more hot gossip. Well, I know it's pretty dumb. It's not dumb. No, it's a stupid thing to be upset over. Amanda, your feelings are real. Don't ever be mad at yourself for having feelings. I guess. Unless you've secretly been a robot who's approximating human feelings this whole time. Dad, if I was a robot, I would have transformed into a monster truck a long time ago. But seriously, I know you probably don't want advice, but I feel like it's my duty as a dad to bestow upon you a few nuggets of fatherly wisdom. When you get older, you start realizing the sort of people you want to associate yourself with. Uh, do you really want to surround yourself with people who would do something like that to their friend? It takes a lot of work to find and maintain meaningful friendships. It took me a long time to figure that out myself, and I wish I had learned it sooner. If the other person isn't putting the effort in to show you how much they care, it's not worth it. You're not beholden to being their friend. Ultimately, I think this says way more about their character than it does about yours, because you're amazing, and if they can't see that, well, that's their problem. I'll keep that in mind. I look down at the table. Did we just eat that whole cake? Yes, we did just eat that whole cake. <laughs> well, good talk. Amanda gets up to her room before she closes her door. She stands around. Hey, Pops? Yeah? Thank you. You're always welcome. Love you, Amanda. I love you too, Dad. Ah, <laughs> ah the voice actor! Fuck! They got me! <laughs> Ow! <laughs> ah, this game is making me want to be a dad! <laughs> Help! It's sucking me in! <laughs> no! <clears throat> right. <clears throat> I love you too, Dad. Welcome. You've got Dad. All right, it's been an hour. We had a date and we helped our daughter? What's this? Finn, listen. This is you from the past. Uh... Whoa, how'd this happen? I figured you're trying to reply to this because I know myself that this is an automated message from you earlier this morning when it was socially unacceptable to go out and buy ice cream. I forgot I did that. I forgot how I did that. As well. The future is amazing. Listen, life is short and ice cream should always be acceptable, but unfortunately this isn't the society we live in. And it's less the society we live in and more me projecting my own anxiety about being judged onto others. But you know what I mean. By the time you're reading this, it is a certain time of day in which nobody will bat an eye at you for going out and buying ice cream. You know what to do. Be good, me. BUY THAT ICE CREAM! You know what? I've earned a treat. On the way home, I decided to stop off and grab some ice cream, which I fully plan to eat directly from the tub. I spent a lot of time trying to figure out just which type of ice cream I'd like to eat directly from the tub. Rocky Road? Pistachio? Oh, Amanda's probably going to want some too. But to get two tubs. She loves cookie dough ice cream, right? Hey, mister. I turn around to see Ernst, leaning up against the wall of the convenience store. Uh, Ernst? You're cool, right? I'm cool, but I don't see what that has to do with anything. Well, if you're cool, you'll help me out, right? Help you out? There's no fire involved, is there? Just clouds. So if I give you $20, will you buy me e-liquid? Ernst? What's e-liquid? It's like, uh, Gatorade, you know? Electrolyte liquid? I get it myself, but I'm banned from here for trying to run a grift on the cashier. A classic fiddle game. You know the deal. Oh, if you're talking about balanced electrolytes, then I got you, little buddy. I didn't know you played the fiddle. It was the like for Blue Cran Razapple Vortex. He'll know what it is. I pick up a top of pistachio ice cream 
for myself and a tub of cookie dough for Amanda. Search around for some blue crescent void stir, <laughs> but I can't seem to find any. Uh, I turn to the cashier. Say, where's your finest tea liquid? Behind the counter. You got an idea? First of all, my daughter is older than you. Second of all, I'm flattered. I switched shampoo recently. And <laughs> is that taking some years off? <laughs> look, you need to be 21 to buy vape juice. Your hair doesn't look a day over 20. Wait a minute. Are you just trying to butter me up to get me to buy more ice cream? Because it's working. I glance outside and spot Ernst looking at me. Double wait a minute. So you're telling me that e-liquid is not a sports drink? It's for vaping. Ernst is watching us intently through the window. I better go give uh, that kid a piece of my mind. I see. Okay, look. I'm going to pretend that you didn't try to trick me into buying you the old uh, Baphomet's cough syrup. And then you go inside here to per uh, purchase my ice cream. I won't tell your dad if you promise to scram. Uh, and then go inside here to purchase my ice cream. Whoops. Uh, and stop vaping. You'll get a popcorn lung. What if I gave you 25? Go home, Ernst. As I'm walking back inside, Ernst type calls after me. You can get my popcorn lung from microwave popcorn, you know. I no longer trust this child, but the more notion strikes... <laughs> but the mere notion strikes fear into my heart. <laughs> I go back inside to complete my purchase with the good cashier. Thank you, kind sir, for your time and generous hair compliments. You got it, bub. I glance out the window while, uh, while to see Anne still outside. Looks like he's talking to some other poor sap. Guess I should go outside and save this other guy some grief. Wait a second. That's definitely a cop. Oh boy. I grab my tubs of ice cream and bolt outside. Anne's is already face down on the hood of a, squ uh, a squad car. Ernst, did you seriously just try to get a cop to buy you e-liquid? Do you know this kid? Uh, yeah, we live in the same cul-de-sac. I know his dad. Listen, he's a good kid, and... I'm this boy's father. I turn around to see Robert walking up the street toward the convenience store. Ernst, what are you doing? I want a lawyer. First of all, <clears throat> first of all, good first instinct. Remember that you're not required to answer any questions from a police officer without a lawyer present. You're this boy's father. Hey. Yes, sir. Ernst likes to lash out at me, <clears throat> out at me like this ever since the accident. Oh, um, I don't like talking about it. And that's fine. Robert gets a wistful twinkle in his eye. It all started seven summers ago. My hair was long then. And no metal was still in style. Ernst and I were down in the Florida swampland scavenging for. So I can leave you to take it from here. Sounds good. Thanks, officer. Ernst, come along now. You'll be cleaning route from the rain gutter for a week, thanks to this transgression. The police officer gets in his car and drives off. I'm stunned by how cool Robert was just there. Thanks. I want to say... Richard? Ouch. Don't mention it, Hemingway. <laughs> <laughs> Got in trouble plenty of times in my life, just trying to do my good deed for the day. Will you buy me liquid if I give you $20? Child, I will end you. <laughs> hey Finn, will you walk Anne's home with me? Sure. Hey. <laughs> Child, I will end you. <laughs> Anst runs ahead, presumably so he won't be seen with us, which is a thing I think kids do. He reminds me a lot of myself when I was his age. Well, maybe I wasn't as dumb. Seems like he tortures his dad. Hey. Seems like he tortures just about everybody. He even stole your wallet. What? No, he did. I pat my back pocket. I pat the rest of my pockets. He stole my wallet! Oh. Why are you doing this to yourself? I... What? Oh. Robert points at my tubs of ice cream. Uh, one of them's for a oh. 
I have no qualms with the quantity of your ice cream you've purchased. It's a perfectly respectable, respectable amount of ice cream. It's the quantity. It's the quality I'm talking about. Okay. You work hard, Finn. You're a good dad. Don't you think you deserve top shelf ice cream? But these were on sale. <laughs> if you're gonna treat yourself, go big or go home. Real vanilla bean, real pistachio. You deserve it. Hey. I love him. We arrive at the cul-de-sac, and Ernst runs into his home. That boy is the reason why we don't have prizes and cereal anymore. Hey. Gotcha around, Finn. Child, I will end you. Dad Kerr, 2021. <laughs> Wait, Dad Kerr? Hang on! <laughs> Robert tosses me my wallet. I catch it with a surprised look on my face. Mm. I stole it back. Mm -hmm. Keep it in your front pocket, or use a chain like, uh, like back in your scar days. I use a chain. That's a thing that I do. I'll smile you later. See ya, Robert. I go back inside uh, my home, ready to spend the rest of the night with two tubs of ice cream and also Amanda. Welcome. You've got dads. Mia, I, I allow you to call me that because of the game we're playing, but otherwise I'd scold you. Yes, you are a dad now, Koro, when I'm playing this, yes. You're a king and a dad. Interesting. Wait, Oreg uses a chain too. Listen, okay, it's just efficient. It stops it from getting stolen. When you go to London, you get a lot of pickpockets. <sighs> Although I have no idea how anyone could pickpocket me with the amount of keychains that I have. I jingle. I jingle when I walk. Uh. Um, okay. I think we'll stop it there. Also, God, he's cool. If I ever play this again, I'm dating him next. Dad Kuro, can I have chocolates, please? Have you finished your dinner? I forgot if I saved. Didn't you date him already? No, I have not. I have not dated him. I slept with him. I finished my dinner, sir. <sighs> then you can go into the cupboard and get the chocolates. But pace yourself. There's mini games? Oh right, I've been unlocking mini games. <laughs>